when are we willing to skip testing? If you have no standards, essentially. If you say, no matter how good this model is, I'm okay to take it to the next stage, I'm fine with building it. Well, in that case, don't worry about testing, just go straight to the next stage. And you can't report performance honestly. So if an SVP asks you, hey, how good is this thing actually? Unless you've done this step, you know, here's my training performance, it's worse than this. It might be minus infinity for all we know. Somewhere between this and minus infinity. That's the answer you give. So if you want to be able to give an honest answer, you got to do this step. And it's okay to skip again if you're happy to just build it and you don't need to do any honest performance reporting. So please never test on data it was involved in any way in training or validation. Kind of the whole game is looking at the evidence after you've set the decision criteria and the risk criteria and saying something like, in the world where the null hypothesis is true, does this evidence surprise me? And so if you've already seen what's in these data and you already know that they pass all your evaluations because you've already trained or validated on them, how can you ever be surprised by the evidence? I mean, you have, you've already picked the answer, you've cherry picked the answer. So though you can still compute p-values and confidence intervals, they don't make any sense there. It's not a fair statement of how we're doing. So please never test on data that was used for anything else. You're going to fool yourself into launching something horrible. And so just to make sure that we all stay safe around here, I'm going to extract a promise from you now out loud. So please repeat after me, everybody. I will never. Test on data that was involved in any way by myself or my colleagues in training or validation. And that is all of our stock portfolios now singing in delight because now we're not going to make some horrible messes around here and all of our users are also singing in delight because we're going to release nice things that they're going to like, enjoy, and that are going to make their lives better. And of course, because you've given me this promise, and you consider yourself honorable, you keep your promises, you cannot find yourself in the following situation, where you do not even know what data set your data point belongs to. That is why you need to make sure that when you split your damn data, as I like to say, it is recoverable, that split. You will be able to know which data set something is assigned to. And so you cannot just use some kind of process like where you do some querying and there's a little bit of randomization in the back end and it spits you out three data sets and then you forget all about which ones they were and then you rerun it and it gives you three other ones. That's not allowed anymore. Now you have to start storing either the ID tags or having some kind of deterministic approach like if it comes from a Tuesday it's in training, if it comes from a Wednesday it's in validation and so forth. So plan to actually store the IDs. And step nine is finished. You have a document detailing whether or not you're going to take it from prototype to production. <laughs>